but it's a pagan city. It's a pagan city with pagan idolatry, pagan worship, all those things like that. And you got Christians that are amongst this city, you know, and amongst all those teachings. So God wants them to know, I know your works, uh, and I understand where you're at. He's saying, even in the midst of uh, Antipas, you know, who you saw, you know, get martyred, you know, and I believe that, uh, if I can use my imagination, I believe that Antipas was given uh, an ultimatum. Either, either you stand for us, you know, and what we believe and what we teach, you know, or the bottom line is that you die. You know, and Antipas was not going to, he was not going to sway, you know, from his faith or his love for God. And a result was, is that uh, he was sacrificed, he sacrificed his own self uh, for the cause of Christ. Uh, so, God is teaching them, he's talking to them, uh, that you could have recognized and saw what took place with Antipas and decide to go away from your faith and uh, 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 went to the doctrine of those pagan worshipers, but he recognized that, that they did not do this. So he says, I know your works and where you live, uh, even where Satan's seat is. Uh, he says also that you held fast to my name. You did not relinquish my name and has not denied my faith. Uh, even in those days where Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain amongst you, where Satan dwelleth. He moves on by saying, that's all good, and I recognize that. Uh, I recognize your strength and your belief. I recognize what you witnessed with Antipas, and you still held firm, you still held strong. He says, but I got something against you. He says, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Uh, he's letting them know that You're there, but there are some folks you're not helping. Mm -hmm. He's saying, it's not just you, you know, there that's holding fast to my name. You're not the only Christians in the building. Right. There's some Christians who are not strong enough, you know, uh, and have, have succumbed to the teachings of pagan worship. So when I look at that, uh, the first thing comes to mind is that uh, we're dealing with a shifting culture also, mm -hmm. uh, is that some folks, you know, uh, uh, don't want to say anything, you know. Some folks are okay with just, you know, I come to church, I, I, I praise God, you know, I do what I do, and that's that, you know, and they leave out of these four walls. Well, we have a job to do, you know, because there are some folks who aren't where you're at in your faith, mm -hmm. you know, and we have, a, we have a mandate to stand up and say something to them, you know, and to speak and to help them. You know, so. Uh, and we live in a culture now that everyone is sensitive. Yeah. So things that maybe when we were growing up that the mother of the church or your mother or your grandparents or aunties and all of that would be able to say to you. And sometimes they said it and they didn't hold their tongue with how they came out. And it may have maybe hurt our feelings, but we did apply what they said. So once you went home and you and you paid attention or you really listened to what they were saying and then it revel it revelated in you and you were able to say, okay, you know what? What they said is correct. So in order for me to be um, an example and to be as Christ would want me to be, let me take hold to what they're saying to me and apply it to my life. To where we live in a day and age now um, that you say something to young folks and because we have given that, and, and I'm saying young folks maybe because we have young people in our home, but it's not just the young people, there's some older people as well, um, that we live in a day and age now that if you say something to someone and, and you are in the right, then um, they don't, it, it's, not, it's not taken out of love. It's taken out of you're against me or you're, you know, think you're better than me or you're 
trying to correct me and your life isn't better. Well, we know that. That's why we come to church, which is our hospital, so that way we can get a word from God so that we can apply it to our life to go out and be better Christians as God wants us to be. But we live in a day and age that it's okay. The shifting culture is now we're able to do this, but as long as I go to church and, and I'm there on a Sunday morning, if I decide to go and I do something that's out of the will of God, then it's okay because I went to church on Sunday. Or we live in a day and age that yes, we say free will, so my free will is I don't want to go today. So if I don't go, I just don't go. But as long as I as long as I speak his name and as long as I, you know, live in, in where I can say it, then I'm okay. And we are now where we don't want to to um hurt anyone's feelings. So if you, you say, Are you going to church today? Oh no, I'm I'm not going to church today. I don't I you know, the church the church isn't right. Oh okay. So instead of us saying, well, what, why, why is that not? You're not supposed to forsake yourself, the assembly of God, and, and you're supposed to come so you can get help in, in, to, in your life so that you can be a better Christian. But we now just brush it under the rug where they can work seven days a week and, and go out and have energy for everything else seven days a week, but we don't have the energy to come in church and to get the word from God. So, so I'm looking at this, and then I see uh, God praise him in one verse, uh, and then, in a sense, rebuke him in another verse. Uh, he lets them know, I know your works. You got good intentions. But then he says, <laughs> I have a few things against you. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, what are you doing with what you get in your teaching to help somebody else? You know, there again, there are some folks who are not as strong as you. There are some folks who struggles. You know, we all struggle, but there are some folks who are struggling. You know, whereas uh, I've been sitting up on the pastor for, for 27 years. So I should have gotten, you know, 27 years of teaching and training. What am I doing with my 27 years, you know, to help a person uh, who's only been sitting up under him for five or 10 and who are struggling with everyday life, who is struggling with their Christianity, who are struggling with being on the fence, you know, uh, 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 being, have one foot in the church, one foot out. What am I doing to help them? So that's, that's his issue uh, with these Christians. You know, there are some other Christians there that are not as strong as some of the Christians, uh, uh, the senior Christians uh, that have been here the longest. Uh, so the one thing I looked at is that in Isaiah 50, 58, God tells, God tells them, uh, uh, he tells Isaiah uh, to cry aloud and to spare not. You know, that means you gotta tell, you gotta tell folks, you know, right or wrong, whether they want to hear it, whether they don't want to hear it, but you have, you have a mandate to tell them. You know, it makes no sense for God to preach all that he does, uh, gives to us, and for us to keep it to ourselves. Right. There are too many people out here that are suffering, that are going through, that are being challenged, that are looking for answers, that are looking for help. And here we are getting what we get every Sunday and walking out those doors and keeping it all to ourselves. Yeah, and we're allowing the enemy uh, to do his due diligence, you know, on those who aren't as strong as we. So he says, I have that against you. You're not helping nobody, bottom line, is you're not helping those who need the help. He says here, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Mm -hmm. He uses that word hate strongly because it repulses him. You know, uh, he don't like it. Uh, it's like, it's like the taste of, uh, 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 what do he say, what do he call, uh, when he says that he'll spew you out of his mouth, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Think it repulses him. Uh, the Nicolaitans, those pagan worshipers 
uh, approved the practice of sexual immorality. Uh, and some Christians were following that practice. So God is saying, has thou also them, those individuals, those Christians that are holding that doctrine of the Nicolaitans, you need to help them. You know, you need to help them get over this hump, per se. You know, you need to help them with their struggle because in this, t in this era, in this time, uh, in this particular city, that was their culture. You know, that's what they did. You know, and uh, when, when you are uh, living in a city where that rules and that's what's taking place, you're easy and you can easily be subject to it. Right. Because now it's a case of uh, are you with us, mm -hmm. you know, or are you not with us? And if you're not with us, this is the result. Right. Antipas, right. you know. This is the result. So he's saying to them, uh, we got to help those, those folks, you know, who are falling victim to the practices of the Nicolaitans. Uh, so he's trying to teach them. He's trying to teach also. And then that goes also back to a shifting culture, mm -hmm. you know, because he got those Christians there who don't want to say anything. They don't want to ruffle no feathers. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get on the wrong side. You know, they don't want to get caught in between you know, uh, uh, the Nicolaitans, uh, the uh, 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 Balaam, and all of their practices. They don't, all I want to do is go to my home mm -hmm. and close my door mm -hmm. after I get out of church. Right. You right. know, that's right. it. Mind you my know? own business. And mind my own business. <laughs> right. Well, again, shift, preaching and teaching to a shifting culture uh, is difficult uh, because you're trying to get folks to understand you know, and not everybody, you know, wants to hear it. That's why he says, those who have an ear, mm -hmm. you know, let them hear, mm -hmm. you know. But it's a struggle. It's a constant struggle. Uh, God's rebuke wasn't just against those who practiced the doctrine of Balaam, but those who allowed them to continue. Excellent. You know, so he's teaching it and he's telling them, okay, they're practicing it, mm -hmm. you know, but you're sitting back watching them watching. and you're not doing anything to help them. To correct you're it. not doing anything mm -hmm. to correct it. Right. Uh, so what are we doing uh, as Christians, right. you know, when we see our fellow Christians uh, who may not be as strong as we are right. still doing some of the same things, still going to some of the same places, uh, still talking in the same language, you know, what are we doing to help them, you know, you can get caught up in the world so much so that you become a part of it. Right. He's teaching here, you know, and he's saying uh, we need to get these folks before uh, they get truly caught up in this pagan worship, you know, before they give of themselves and, and totally succumb to it. So uh, we have a job to do, you know, as, 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 as children of God as Christians, as believers, because we have some folks, we have some, we have, as Pastor would say, some baby Christians that are still on milk, mm -hmm. and we have to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, so he says this, repent. I like that word. He says, repent or else, or else. I will come unto thee quickly mm -hmm. and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth mm -hmm. uh, repent he simply tells them uh, to go a different way mm -hmm. uh, change attitude and conduct mm -hmm. of what you're doing repenting if we repent we can help somebody right. if we can recognize that I'm not doing all that I can do then I can help somebody else right. But if I don't think that I'm doing anything wrong, right. you know, then the person that needs help won't get it won't from me. It. So he says, I need you to repent. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I view repent to. as um, sorry. We, we live in the shifting culture, which is what we're calling it. Um, and what, what the topic is, 
We live in a culture that I, they don't say I'm sorry. We don't say I'm sorry. And now the thing is my bad, which, okay, you're bad, but where is I'm sorry? And we, we live in a culture that we don't say that anymore. It's, it's I'm bad or my mistake or okay, but they don't say I'm sorry. And when you repent for something, you are truly sorrowful yeah. for what you have done and you do not want to do it again. So I think in this culture, if now if we say, I'm sorry, we're admitting that we're wrong to something, that we live in a culture that now they really don't think they're wrong. I, I, I have an opinion, and you may not agree with my opinion, but I really think I'm right. So because you, take, you didn't take it the way that I'm presenting it, we're going to just agree to disagree. So we're not going to say, I'm sorry, even though I know it may not be right. We're just going to say, I'm my bad. So when we repent and God wants us to do that, he wants us to be sorrowful for what we've done. And which, what that does is that makes you want to change your way. You want to do it as God wants you to do it. And you want to make sure that the person that you are witnessing to, that you are helping, truly understands that my way was not God's way. So because of that, we're going to turn in the direction of God. So I'm sorry because it's done wrong and it's not done in God's way. So he tells them, he, he says repent. Uh, those Christians, uh, in all actuality, that should be helping the other ones. Uh, he tells them to repent. Because you chose not to do what was right. He says, or else I will come unto you quickly. Well, judgment starts at the church. Yes. We understand that all will be judged. And the world will be judged also. But the world will be judged after the church. Yes. Why, does, why is the church first to be judged? Right. Because he expects the most out of us. Right. You know, and... He holds us accountable. Yes. He holds us accountable to talk to those, to teach those, to train those uh, who may not understand or who are still learning or who are still falling victim to the sins of the world. He says, repent. Uh, I got this thing with, with being sorry because I say sorry uh, is the worst type of person to be. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's just me. Um, he said, and I will, I will fight against them uh, with the sword of my mouth. Uh, that's his word. The sword is his word. Uh, and his word cuts like a two-edged sword. And it referenced that also. Uh, and, when, and when I was reading this, and I was reading when he was talking about cutting uh, like a two-edged sword, and he, he, he said that it will cut so much so down to your soul, that even as deep as the marrow in your bone, I said, now that's deep cutting. Yeah. Uh, and that's strong words that he will have for us when it's that time, uh, when he comes back, you know, when he comes back to judge, he's going to ask us some questions that we may not have any answers to. You know, he's going to ask us, you know, why did you not help those who have fallen victim uh, to the sinful natures of the world. Uh, and we're going to have to have an answer for it. You know, he holds us as Christians responsible. So he says here, as we, as we get ready to wrap up, he says here, he that has an ear, let him hear. Those individuals who want it, you know, give it to them. Yes. Those who want the help, help them. You know, uh, he says also, uh, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the hidden manner. I like that. He says, those who receive it, those who overcome it, you know, those who have received the word and have turned from their ways. He says, I will, this is his blessing. I will uh, 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 give thee hidden manner. He says, I will give him a white stone and, a, and in the stone a new name. That's good news written which no man knoweth uh, saving he that receives it uh, this stone 
represents uh, friendship. It can represent evidence of being counted. Uh, it can even be a sign of acquittal, you know. Uh, and your new name, uh, only you will know. That's a good, that's, that's, that is good news because it, it won't matter to me afterwards what people call me. Right. The only thing that will matter to me is what's on that stone. Right. What God has personally given to me. What he has changed my name from. No matter what people call me, the only name I got to answer to is what the one God gave me. And that's good news. Uh, I thank God for his work in me. I thank God for his teaching. I thank God for instilling in me uh, his word so I can take it out to a dying world. I thank him for purpose because I know and I've learned what my purpose is. Uh, my children would not be where they are. They would not uh, know what they know unless we give it to them. And we can't give it to them unless we continue to receive it from God and be acceptance of what he gives us. So I thank him for what he's instilled in us. Uh, I thank uh, 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 my wife for allowing me to be the teacher uh, of our home and of our children because you got some who you can't say nothing to. You know, you got some that, you know, uh, if you say something this way, then it's combated with this, mm -hmm. you know. But thank God that that's not the case here. Uh, Mama, you have anything else? We're, we're glad that we have an ear to hear. And, and he is right. We it, it, It's progress. It's not something that we were able to do overnight, but God has blessed us 26 years in marriage and learning that um, our individual way, when God has created you to be one, it, it's, it's not God's way. So when God has blessed you in um, a marriage to be one with an individual, that is exactly what you are, one. Yes, you are your own individual person, Yes, you have your own individual purposes, but when it comes to what God wants for the house and what he wants you to deliver from your house out into a world, then you have to be one with that. And he gives to you your teacher, which is Reverend Flood in our house. So since he has a calling that God has given to him, he didn't give me that calling, he gave him that calling. I'm along for the ride, but he's there for that calling. So with that, there's a different wisdom that he has equipped him with, that he not only gets from God, but he gets from our pastor. So when he gets it from the teaching, how dare I say something different than what God has directed our shepherd to give to my shepherd of my home to be able to give to our children so that we are able to go out and teach those that want to hear. And my comment with the want to hear, let the whoever has an ear, we, we think it's people that want to just come up to us and sit down or is in our company that wants to hear. But there's people out there that they may not directly ask you for your advice or ask, you know, what is happening or or you see, I work in a setting of a doctor's office. So I'm able to um, hear and I'm able to listen and I'm, we're able to, to be a witness to patients that come in sick, to employees that come in with bad days, with doctors and, and providers that are not always at their best. But God has equipped us to be able to come in and say, okay, guys, I know things are not you know, the way we want them to be. I know we're questioning maybe a little bit of this illness or whatever someone is going through, but God has this thing. There is a purpose, there is a reason, there is always something and you're put in this position and you're put in this area for a reason. So fulfill your, your purpose with people to serve them with their um, behaviors and their emotions and some of them are rude, but you got, you, you have to, be able to say, okay, I, I understand your frustration. I understand you're in pain. I understand you may be hurting, but there's another way we can handle this. 
and, and when you have that ear, and even if the person that you may directly be talking to, and there's someone else that may have the same attitude that they had, that they were coming up and wanting to say something, then when they hear your interaction with that person, then they, they think about it and say, okay, you know, you're right. This is not, I'm, I'm here to get help. I'm not here to be ugly. So we hear everyone. And so God is saying for us to say it regardless. If you're in the room of, of people, say it. Now, they may not respond to you, but that they, they heard you. And, and it may not be the person that you're directly speaking to that may make a change, but it may be the person that you, didn't, you weren't even aware that was listening to what you were talking about, that it will prick their hearts and they will come and say, what must I do to be saved? Amen. So don't, be like, don't, don't be like Lot. You know, when he lived in the pagan city and y'all know the story, you know, those folk came to his door, you know, uh, wanting him to release those angels to him, to them, uh, and he held, he held fast for but a moment, but then he turned right around and offered his daughter, you know, so, uh, so yeah, so just that quick, so Lot needed some work, <laughs> uh, he needed a lot of work, but we can learn something from Antipas, uh, it's better to sacrifice for the cause of Christ, right, uh, than to be, than to compromise for the, for the temporary uh, pleasures, uh, sinful pleasures of the world. Amen. I enjoyed myself, didn't you? I enjoyed myself. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank we want to say thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, uh, we, thank, we thank the Lord for just allowing us to share along with our pastor again. And thank you for tuning in uh, to our Wednesday in the Word. And we pray that we did said something that would help um, you to be a better person, a better Christian, that it, it, it pricked our hearts and it's helping us um, to apply it to our lives as well. So thank you and you all have a good night. Get ready.